What's up fellow bookworms and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dylan and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the 2022 Kindle releases and I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on which one is the best. And of course, at their core, all of the Kindles are the same. They offer a really fun and convenient way to enjoy a good book. So there really are no winners and losers, of course, but as far as design and functionality and ability, these devices do differ quite drastically. So let's get right into it with the first new release of 2022, which was the new Kindle Basic. This thing came out in, I believe, October. I picked mine up right at the beginning of November, and there is a lot of really solid pros and admittedly some cons with this device. So let's start off with the cons, the things I didn't really like about it. So the first one is really going to just be personal preference, really like most of these things are going to be. But for me, the thing I like the least about this device is probably its size. So it makes for a really good, portable, convenient travel Kindle. We could talk more about that in the pro section. But for me, it feels like if you increase the font to anything over like size 12, you're really only getting like one paragraph at a time on the screen. So you're just, to me, it feels like constantly having to tap the screen to advance the page. And it kind of takes away from the reading experience, at least for me. Now, the second thing is another that could definitely be on the pros list as well, but for me, it does kind of feel like a cheaper device. It is made entirely of plastic, kind of just like your generic hard plastic. It's perfectly durable, but to me, it does just kind of feel almost toyish, if that makes sense. But again, that comes with the cost, which is another thing we'll talk about on the pros list. But finally, my biggest complaint about this device, the only real legitimate, I think, objective complaint, even though, of course, it is all still personal preference, is that the Kindle Basic doesn't come with a warm light. So the warm light is probably one of my favorite features on any Kindle device because it allows you to read, I think, more comfortably in a dark environment, specifically before bed. So warm light is just when your Kindle screen turns a little bit warmer, kind of like a yellowishy color, that's just really easy on the eyes and just kind of soothing. It's really hard to put into words how great it is or why I like it. It's one of those things that you just kind of have to experience for yourself to truly appreciate it. But again, I know a lot of people don't use the warm light or just don't like the warm light and don't like the yellowy color that it puts off, which of course is totally fine. Now getting into the pros list for this device, and there really are a lot of things we could put on this list. Probably first and foremost for me is price. This thing is $99 brand new, and it comes standard with 16 gigabytes worth of storage, which is absolutely crazy. And like I said, this device has all the features pretty much that the Paperwhite has, just with the exception of the warm light feature. So if that's something you don't think you would like or just are not interested in, and you don't mind a smaller size device, then, the Kindle Basic is probably the way to go. Like I said, that's especially true if you just plan to kind of have a Kindle that you don't mind tossing around, you know, like I said, tossing in a purse or just maybe tossing in your car on a, I don't know, whatever you just might wanna read on the go, you can just always have this thing handy. And since it is $99, which is a lot of money, you don't have to stress out about it as much as maybe you would with an Oasis, which comes in at $250, or the new Scribe, which can almost run at about $500, depending on which model you get. So all in all, I do really, really like the new Kindle Basic, especially the blue color, which is another thing that I didn't really put on a pro or con list because it's completely subjective. I personally do like the blue color a lot, but having said that, I still don't think the Kindle Basic is the best Kindle that's come out in 2022. Now, the most anticipated release of 2022 was without a doubt, the new Kindle Scribe. As soon as this thing was announced back in, I believe, September, everyone seemed to be interested in this device. Now, this thing has just come out a couple weeks ago. The official release date was November 30th. And I gotta say, I have a lot of really mixed emotions about this device. Well, I guess not 
emotions, but feelings about this device. So keeping with the format of the pros and cons here, we'll start with the cons. And the first thing that I really don't like about this device was honestly the price point. To me, it does feel quite overpriced. Now it is a very premium product. You've got a glass display. You've got a really nice aluminum backing. It comes with a pen. Uh, there's two versions of the pen. There's the standard pen, and then there is the premium pen as well. But to get the very base model of this thing, you're looking at about $350. But that price can go up pretty quickly. The 300 and I think it's $40 base model comes with the basic pen and 16 gigabytes worth of storage, which is probably honestly enough for the average user. But if you want the 64 gigabyte version, that comes standard with the premium pen, you're looking at $420 plus tax. And if you want a case, that's when you're getting pretty close to the $500 range for what is basically a notebook that you can read a book on. And that's totally unfair. I know that's, that's simplifying this device probably a little bit too much, but honestly, that really is what you've got. You've got a digital piece of paper with a pen that you can read books on. <laughs> and then probably the biggest con here, and this is really just based on expectation. This is not necessarily Amazon's fault, but when this device was announced and they were kind of advertising it as a Kindle that you could write with, you know, you can obviously use the included pen and write on the screen. I think everyone at first was expecting to be able to annotate a page of a book. So underline an important phrase, write a little note in the margin, that kind of thing, which would have been so cool. But that was unfortunately not the case. As of now, the only way you can actually write on a book is through what they're calling sticky notes, which is where you would tap on a place on the screen, a little window pops up, you can write your note, exit out of that little window, and then a little sticky note icon just kind of stays where you have put it, where you've made that note. But you can't actually annotate on the page of the book, you can't underline the text, you can't highlight the text or anything like that, which for me, and I know for a lot of others was kind of a huge letdown. There are talks that maybe in a future update, this will be amended and this feature will one day be available, but for now it is not. And that is quite disappointing, I know. But as far as cons, those are really the only that I can come up with, though I do know that those are quite big on the cons list. But as for pros, there are also quite a few things that I really do love about this device. The first and the most obvious is this really premium feel of the device. It feels like a nice device. Now, again, at the price, does it feel $500 nice? I don't know, <laughs> but it does feel like a really premium, luxurious device, which I do enjoy. And then of course, there's the size of the screen. This is a 10.2 inch display, and it is 300 pixels per inch, which is far superior to anything comparable to it. Everything looks super crisp and clean on this device, and it just, it really does look beautiful as you use it. And not only does it look nice, but it also feels really nice to use. Making a note on this thing, using the pen, just feels, I don't know, nice. It just feels good. I don't really know how to describe it, but I really do enjoy using this thing. And even though I don't take a lot of notes in my book, I do feel tempted to write something down just so I can use the pen and write something down. I know that sounds kind of silly, but this device really is fun to use and en enjoyable to use. But on top of that, you can pretty much file all the other Kindle Pros on this list. It has the nice warm light feature and it has automatic brightness. The battery life is crazy. It lasts at least a month, I would say, on a single charge, depending on how much you use it. You've got access to the jillions of books on the Kindle ecosystem. And so I guess if we were just to keep it short, we would say that everything the Kindle has going for it, this device obviously has going for it as well. But even still, I don't think that the new Kindle Scribe is the best Kindle release of 2022. I think that title belongs to a device that's kind of flown under the radar this year, and that is the new standard 16 gigabyte Paperwhite. 
So for the longest time, the basic Paperwhite came standard at six gigabytes. And if you wanted more storage than that, you had to pay pretty much double for the Paperwhite Signature Edition, which is a pretty cool device in and of itself and does have some pretty great features. But kind of quietly, without making much of an announcement at all, Amazon released a 16 gigabyte version of the Paperwhite that is only like $10 more than the base model Paperwhite. In fact, right now, the 16 gigabyte version is on sale for $115, where the eight gigabyte version is 110. So for five more dollars, you can get twice the storage on a really, really great device. And if you've seen any of my other Kindle videos, you probably know that the Paperwhite in my opinion, is the best Kindle out there. For the price, for the features, you really can't beat it. The Kindle Basic that we talked about is a good device, maybe even a great device, but I do think that it falls short in some ways. And the Oasis, which we haven't talked about in this video, is another really great device, but it's twice the price of the Paperwhite and it really has the same exact features. Other than appearances, there's nothing different about that device. And the Scribe is a really great device as well, but like we've said, for the cost, I do think it's overpriced for what you get. And so that's why I think the Paperwhite is the Goldilocks of the Kindle lineup. It's right in the middle, it's the perfect blend of everything. You get all the features that are available across the Kindle spectrum, pretty much, but for a really, really great price. I think the size of the screen is fantastic. It's a perfect blend of portability, but also functionality and usability. It's got a seven inch screen that looks just really, really great at 300 pixels per inch. You've got the warm light feature, which as I've said, is one of my favorite features on the Kindle. The only thing that this device doesn't have that I wish it did was the auto brightness feature that is currently only available on the Paperwhite Signature Edition. But again, for twice the price at I think about $200, I don't think it's worth the upcharge just to have the screen auto dim or auto bright. So that's why I think that the best new Kindle release of 2022 was actually just the 16 gigabyte version of the Paperwhite. But let me know in the comments below what you thought the best new release of 2022 was. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you agree with me, definitely feel free to let me know. And if you disagree with me, I would love to know why. So please let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.